What's going on, everyone? So, league sources told the Miami Herald on Thursday that the Miami Heat, Los Angeles Clippers, Los Angeles Lakers, Boston Celtics, Chicago Bulls, and Philadelphia 76ers are destinations that appeal to Holiday. Uh, that's important because Holiday 33 can become a free agent next summer with a player option worth $37.4 million in his contract for the 2024-2025 season. So, Drew Holiday, many Laker fans are pleading <laughs> for Drew Holiday. They want Drew Holiday badly. And I get it, man. I mean, Drew Holiday would make the Lakers tough. Tough. I mean, that would give you a elite point of attack defensive guard. One of, if not the best, all around just point guards. Again, doesn't mean the best point guard. I'm talking about all around a guy that can make plays, play both sides of the basketball, defend multiple positions, and still go give you 20 on any given night. I mean, him, Austin Reeves, Jared Vanderbilt, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, good luck. I mean, that would by far make us the best defensive team in the league. We'd still be very good offensively. We'd still have tons of depth. Everything makes sense for the Lakers to go get Drew Holiday, except for the fact that they cannot get Drew Holiday until December. Now, could he still be on Portland come December? Sure, it's always a possibility. If Portland can't find a deal now, right, they're not in a rush to get rid of him. I know he has a player option. Drew Holiday at age 34 is not going to turn down a 37, almost $38 million player option. He's not. Right, so they're not gonna have to worry about him. Drew Holiday isn't gonna lose his value, and realistically, there is the argument to be made if you wait now, right? Come the trade deadline, there are gonna be teams that are more desperate that feel like, okay, we we're right there, you know, we just need that missing piece or something, and now you have this like dog fight to go get Drew Holiday. So there is a Slim chance that the Lakers could be in that conversation. Uh, the fact that Drew Holiday wants to be a Laker has kind of added more fuel to the fire. And look, Drew Holiday on the Lakers, besides just fit and play style, because again, Drew Holiday, you could literally put Drew Holiday on any team in the league, any of them. Name me a team. Put Drew Holiday on that team, and that team immediately becomes better. And he would fit seamlessly because of his skill set. He is the perfect just blue chip, high level, like star level guy, right? Like he is just perfect. And as like your third or fourth guy, like stop. But the other thing is too, is his relationship and connection with Darvin Ham. Darvin Ham and him would be, a, Darvin Ham kind of gives us a leg up because their familiarity and that could be something that could be a little bit of a driving narrative and potentially acquiring Drew Holiday. But again, it's just, I don't see it getting there, right? I'm pretty confident one of these teams are going to make the push to go get Drew now, right? Especially like the Clippers. Like the Clippers are interested in, in James Harden. I think Drew Holiday makes more sense for them than uh, James Harden does. Because I'd give him, again, that point of attack defender. He could play alongside Russell Westbrook better. Doesn't really need the ball. Like, I don't know. I, I I just, I would be surprised if he is on that roster come training camp. Right? Or come media day. Uh, but if he is, and the Lakers have the opportunity, I personally think the Lakers should do it. Now, question is, what do the Lakers have to give up? Is the other thing. So, obviously, it's going to be D'Angelo Russell. But you're probably losing Rui Hachimura in that deal too. Is trading D'Lo and Rui Hachimura, or Lu, Rui Hachimura, is it worth losing those two guys for a 33, going to be 34-year-old guard? I mean, if you win an NBA championship, then yes. The answer is yes. But if you don't, be a tough move, right? And like, yes, could the Lakers stack guys, right? Could you do something like D'Lo, Gabe Vincent, like Maxwell Lewis, Max Christie, and, you know, whomever else, right? Sure. But is that something that they'd want to do? Or could you throw in, like, Cam Reddish or whatever, right, and just kind of stack a bunch of contracts? Sure. But one, why would Portland want to do it? Unless there's somebody that they really like, right? Unless they're like, oh, I really like Maxwell Lewis. 
Um, and two, it's just like, well, then now the Lakers got to find a bunch of players. And it's just, I, I, I just don't think that makes sense for either side. So realistically, you're probably giving up D'Lo and Rui Hachimura. I don't hate the idea. I don't. Um, just because you'd still have plenty of depth. You'd still have plenty of size and versatility. And Drew Holiday has the potential to basically... You're teetering on that contending, contending status. Drew Holiday has the potential to put you over that. He also has a relationship with Anthony Davis. But here's the other big thing, too. Right? Losing D'Angelo Russell and Rui Hachimura would hurt. It would... You're losing two great offensive guys. You're losing your best playmaker alongside or outside of LeBron James. Both of these guys are more than capable of just getting you buckets. But so can Drew Holiday. And again, the defensive aspect and element of that, I just think is worth it. Because again, you'd literally be the best defensive team in the league. I mean, good luck trying to score on Anthony Davis, Jared Vanderbilt, and Drew Holiday. <laughs> like seriously, like that's where it just sounds ridiculous. Like that just sounds unfair. They'd match up perfectly against you know the Phoenix Suns, the Denver Nuggets, even the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics, right? But you're you're sacrificing a good piece of your future, right? Because Rui Hachimura is supposed to be very likely a, a big key component for the foreseeable future for the Lakers. D'Angelo Russell may or may not be, right? That's kind of like the big question mark, right? Because he's a guy that, one, he could just opt out and leave next year if he wants. But the other thing, too, is like, it just seems like the Lakers, all of the reports, all the conversations have been about D'Lo potentially departing. And look, I've talked about this heavily. I like D'Lo. I want the Lakers to keep D'Lo. I was campaigning for the Lakers to trade for D'Lo weeks before they actually did, before he was even thought to be available. I just figured he probably would be, and it would make sense to go get him. I want him to be successful. I hope he plays so good it's impossible for the Lakers to trade him. Right? Like, I, I genuinely do. But the narrative and conversation was, if D'Lo gets re-signed, it's to look to trade him at the trade deadline. And then... They end up getting him to waive his no trade clause. It's like, you know, usually where there's smoke, there's fire. Again, Rob Polinka is not just going to trade D'Lo just to trade D'Lo, but to get a Drew Holiday, it'd be kind of tough to say no to that, right? I think Drew Holiday would make the Lakers better. I do, right? He's not the offensive player that D'Lo is, but I think. He would fit in seamlessly and make the Lakers that much better defensively and still could provide a good enough offensive game to, to supplement that, right? And D'Lo also just, he's the one guy, if you were going to trade anybody, you're going to start with him. Because again, he is very, I mean, after this year, he could easily just say, hey, I'm out of here, see you guys later. And you lose him for nothing. So... If you have the opportunity to get a guy in Drew Holiday, then that makes sense. But the biggest long-term reason for going and getting Drew Holiday, in my opinion, is Giannis. So the reports were that the Milwaukee Bucks did not consult Giannis because they were trading Drew Holiday, which leads me to believe that he wouldn't have been a fan or isn't a fan of them trading Drew Holiday. Now, obviously, if him and Damian Lillard are great and they win an NBA championship, I'm sure he'll be okay. But he really likes Drew Holiday. Just because Damian Lillard is on the Milwaukee Bucks doesn't guarantee that Giannis stays. I think it's that much more likely. But what if they lose in, like, the second round? All right? Giannis, all of a sudden, those conversations start becoming a thing. Having Darvin Ham as the head coach and Drew Holiday on the roster be pretty enticing in the LA market would be a pretty enticing way to lure Giannis to come to the Lakers. You'd have Anthony Davis, the best player you've ever played with. Even with you playing with Dame now, best player you've ever played with. 
you wouldn't have to do everything on the defensive side. You wouldn't have to do everything on the offensive side. You'd also have your buddy Drew Holiday. You'd, be the, you'd still be the best defensive team in the league. You'd still have plenty of depth, plenty of talent. Also, the Lakers are a free agent destination who have done a great job in the draft as well and getting players. Like, you wouldn't have any problems filling out your roster. Imagine Drew Holiday, Austin Reeves, Anthony Davis, and Giannis. Whew. And Jared Vanderbilt, right? I mean, unless you have to trade for Giannis. But even then, like, let's say you had to trade everybody, but you had Drew Holiday, Giannis, and say 35-year-old Drew Holiday, Giannis, and Anthony Davis. 35-year-old Drew Holiday, I still think, will be Drew Holiday, at least for a couple more years, because he's not some guy that, you know, relies solely on athleticism or anything like that, right? So, I mean, again, Drew Holiday, Anthony Davis, and uh, a uh, Giannis, whoo, that'd be tough. That'd be tough. So, look, point is, I I love the idea of going and getting Drew Holiday. If, come December 15th, Drew Holiday is still on Portland, which, again, could make sense. And, look, from a Portland, Portland standpoint, you don't really have to trade him. Again, he's not going to turn down $37 million. He's not, because he's not going to get that anywhere else. So he's not turning down $37 million, so you don't have to worry about losing him this year. And on top of that, I mean... A Scoot Henderson, Drew Holiday, Sharp, uh, Grant, and Aiton roster? It's a pretty good starting five. I mean, it's not a contending starting five, but you're, I mean, that's good enough to, I mean, maybe even get into the play in, depending on how good Scoot is. If Scoot is anything close to what he's supposed to be and is supposed to win Rookie of the Year this year, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, I know Victor Wimbyama is supposed to be the guy, but many people think Victor Wimbyama. Spurs are going to kind of protect him this year, and he's not going to be that guy. So, I mean, what if Scoot Anderson is like a 20-plus point a game guy? You go get Drew Holiday, you'd be good defensively. You'd have good size, right? Sharp looked like a real baller last year. Got a 2010 center in Aiden. Like, the idea of them keeping Drew Holiday isn't bad. Problem is, is that if, let's say they are a play-in team, or like, what happens if, like, they sneak into the playoffs or something? Right? Like, what if they're like the sixth seed? I don't think that'll happen, but, you know, what if they are? Then they're probably not trading Drew Holiday, unless it's for like a deal that just is a no brainer that makes sense. I don't think it's like impossible that he's going to be there December 15th. I just think it's very unlikely. Like, I would be surprised. I would. I would genuinely be surprised. I'll be surprised. If he's in a Portland uniform on Media Day, which is Monday, I'll be surprised, which is three days away, right? Because I do. I think he gets traded this weekend. If he, I mean, depending on when you watch this video, he might have already been traded. But I don't know. It's just thought. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Agree with me? Disagree with me? Again, don't get your hopes up. Like, I, I think it's very, very slim. Because he's not getting bought out, and I don't see him being there December. But those are my thoughts. Love your ears. Let me know.